Taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy. If I got something to say, you better let me speak. Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything. I pop pop with the new rock. Electronic, blow the sonic roof up. I'm too honest when I take a few shots. They're too toxic, need to take the new song. And you cannot save me. Cause I don't need saving. It's everything I've been chasing. All here for the taking. Don't wanna test your luck with me. I think I've had enough disease. I'm sick of all the bad thoughts. People who won't have guns. You will not stop fast. <laughs> You never guess. I don't slack, don't lose. Learn your lesson yet. When I get to choose what I do, I'm like a weapon. I'm not sharp as many, but got hard. I'm ready to change scars to envy to win large and plenty. I like to play fast, never change back. Calling, calling out, I'll pay back. Cause I'm great at that. all. Oh. You cannot save me. Cause I don't need saving. It's everything I've been chasing. All here for the day. Don't want to Cruising in my lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold-blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running shit right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane. Making pleasure out of pain, uh. Turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change, I've been rocking this exchange, uh Popping off and risking things, gonna make a fucking name, I just wanna be famous But I don't want that cheap fame, no I'm not that vain, I just wanna be greatness Hello and welcome to the Smite Draft League. We're in Premier Week 1. I'm Anthony and I've got with me Nova. How are you today? I'm excellent. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited. I didn't get to cast yesterday, so today is my first day with Premier and I'm so excited to see what we've got coming out. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I'm excited to see what we've got going on. I'm already seeing some pretty common bands coming out here. We've got a Cupid, a Hades and the notorious chorus band yeah pretty common a little surprised i'm gonna sound like 
the person I've been casting with Fish, but a little surprised at the Cupid ban. There's been so much attention on the Cupid lately, but so far in a lot of the games, be it Challenger, our custom conquest tournaments, or Premiere, Cupid's kind of been underwhelming. Yeah, I, I, I notice a lot of the Cupid bans. Um, Cupid is a, a really good god. I can't play him personally, but a lot of the time when I see people playing Cupid, they, they're doing an excellent job. But some of these games, it could be hit or miss, as, especially depending on the team composition you have. So I could understand if it is underwhelming or could be overwhelming. Absolutely. And we do see a Kepri ban coming through as well always a safe bet no matter pretty much no matter what the meta honestly absolutely uh there's nothing more agitating when you are just running it down you are hitting all your shots and you're, you're a basic away from you know getting that kill and then there comes a, a kepri ult and there goes your kill absolutely and if we could just have production please pull up the stream when there's a moment but yeah kepri is a frustrating support to try to play around and we do see a Daji ban coming out too. Another interesting ban, strong ultimate off the table. Yes, absolutely. I Daji is a is a god that I am desperately trying to get a hold of and, and get skillful with, but those people that are good with Daji are the most aggravating kind of player, but good for them. Um, we are seeing a Guan Yu coming out and an Ishtar. What are yeah, we thinking we, on that? We saw the Ho Yi hovered, and now we're looking at an X ball. Oh. Maybe they're just trying to give us a bit of a tease. Maybe they're trying to throw the senses off. But I like the Guan Yu pick. So far, Guan Yu has been in a lot of these games for, again, any league. Guan Yu's just been strong. That ultimate has been a game changer time in and time out. I'm curious if we're going to see the X ball get locked in as we see the Ymir get hovered as well. Yeah, Ymir can definitely help change the course of a game, especially if you're timing just your freeze alone, uh, and especially go, you know, an X ball coming into that. I'm excited to to see how that plays out if that's what we're going for. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's it kind of seems silly because we're at a state of smite where there's so many characters, there's so many options, but a lot of times, it's kind of simpling it down and going with just a Ymir wall blocking off a corner could be the way as we see the x ball change to a Lancelot and that's gonna get locked in what do you think about that that's definitely gonna I'm not too familiar with the premier players quite yet uh, I'm I'm curious is that going to somebody else because I'm not entirely sure what that that mindset would be for that yeah if I'm not mistaken and I could be I caught a bit of the premiere games on Saturday and there was a Lancelot ADC at one point. So we could be seeing it go that way and that you know. Interesting. Yeah, interesting choice as we see the Morgan get hovered. Talk about an impact selection if we see that get locked in. Listen, I am an advocate for the Morrigan. She's a fantastic mage. Um, especially looking at a Neja lock in. The Morrigan, you gotta be careful with what you're picking. I know from experience, I use it to my advantage. So if that if that's a lock-in, as it is, it's going to be extremely powerful in this game. Yeah, very, very strong pick here. Picks here for order side. The Neja with the Morgan and the Guan Yu. The Morgan's got so many options just from her own team. And I, I, got, I love the setup. I love the strengths. Excited to see where they go the rest of the way, but very strong early draft here. Yes, as we see a Ravana locked in now, I just know out of personal experience, this Mori could show up for sure. I'm interested to see what the rest of the draft is going to look like. Both teams are looking pretty strong. I am questioning the Lance a lot a little bit here, but as long as you build correctly and communicate correctly, it, it's not going to quite matter. Um, and as long as they just work together as a team, that could be pretty strong also. Yeah, for sure. I think... I, a big thing for me that I want to see coming out from order side here is a strong ADC pick. I think that could round out the team in a really good way, giving the Morgan options, giving that duo lane some strength. And, you know, again, we, we keep talking about metas and things that last through every meta and nothing can carry you through any meta more than having an ADC that could pick something impactful and perform and make that impact mean something. Absolutely. We are... Oh. 
and it looks like we did have a bit of an issue so we'll be right back with you on the smite draft league All right, welcome back to the Smite Draft League. We apologize, we had some slight technical difficulties. Noob had spilled coffee on the picks and bands, but we're back. I'm still Anthony, and we still have Subnova with us. Yes, it is unfortunate. You know, the coffee. Come on, come on, Nooblet. Yeah, gotta gotta be more careful with your cups of coffee here. But we're getting back into it. No big thing. Again, I, I think we did see a Yamoja, which is uh, a Yamoja ban, which is what I was starting to talk about. Uh, Yamoja is terrifying. I'm just going to throw that out there. What what are your thoughts, Anthony, on Yamojas? I, I really like Yamoja. I think I'm a big stickler for it ultimates that can be game changing and i think we saw it a couple times yesterday actually where that yamoja ultimate was a turn of events especially underneath the tower at one point where a uh, yamoja ultimate managed to capture the entire team underneath a tier one tower and they just got blown up from there so definitely a good call on the ban there we do also see a ho yi ban coming out so and a uh hamdalir ban too so no adcs here <laughs> Yeah, it's getting almost like slim pickings out here. I could understand uh, a Cabracken ban here. I'm not too sure who is it that plays Hoi, uh, but Hoi can also be pretty pretty aggressive. I feel also depending on the uh, the support. Uh, I'm interested to see kind of what they're going to go for now with these bans. Yeah, we talked about it a bit before and. I really think the ADC pick could be a make or break here for Life of the After Party. And I I don't know what I want to see here. I Part of me almost wants a, maybe a Rama or something like that, but where are you thinking they could go? It's important that you say you, you're, you're calling for a Ram. I think that is a strong pick. I, I think Rom's just got a perfect kit in general for it, especially with the Morrigan. I, I am going to keep referring back to the Morrigan just because she is so strong to have on a team. But now we're going to look at a Tiamat and an Osiris on the order side. 
both extremely good and strong picks while we do see the Changa on the Chaos side. What are we thinking on that Changa? Uh, I like the Changa. A bit of a pocket pick for some people. You know, it, I feel like Changa almost has the same vibes as an Aphrodite where every, you know, every mid laner has played way more Changa than they would openly admit to you. But I will say the Tiamat on the other side is a bit a bit curious to me and with the combination of the Osiris I'm kind of not too sure how I'm feeling about that overall team it kind of threw off my, my my plan for their synergy almost yeah I, I could definitely see where you're coming from with that I do I personally don't play a lot of Tiamat but I know Tiamat can be very strong I think I would like to see a, a different god on this on this roster here, but I, I don't think I'd necessarily be too upset over it, I suppose, but I, I, I just, I don't see it working out great just with the composition there. So I'm kind of with you on that, but who knows? Yeah, and there's a lot of versatile picks coming from both sides, especially from the side of Chaos. I mean, really the Rob and the Lancelot and the Chonka could all go to a different lane each, even the Ymir. So it's kind of hard to, put together what their end game goal could be here as we do see the lock-ins coming from life of the after party so tiamat and osiris will meet us in game either way it's interesting to see it's going to be a good game uh i would love to you know with the anticipation here going on i'd like to see what this last pick is yeah and as we see a medusa get hovered i actually i think i like that with this team i feel like there's a lot of setup but the charybdis could be a bit of a pivot from what was originally hovered and you know it's always so hard before things get locked in here to see what they could potentially go but i actually think i would have liked the medusa a lot of setup would have come out of it i could see a big follow-up from changa but the charybdis not a bad pick either as that's gonna get locked in absolutely charybdis is a, a wonderful god very easy to self-peel for herself that's gonna be i think pivoting also for sure and with that we've got our team set we're ready for our sunday game here in the smite draft league we will see you in game I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me and open wounds start to see everybody come here gather round welcome to the freak show the best in town what the hell's wrong with me I don't get along with anybody honestly I've been living in my own head constantly thoughts jumbled round think I need a new lobotomy wait all these thoughts are too negative I don't want to get lost in the sedative gotta show them what I got I'm competitive you know I'm about to go off I won't let them win I'll take a stab I want to chase a bag I want to way I can change all the things I lack I gotta face the facts I gotta taste and that got me obsessed with
You, I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever want to give me wings You don't ever want to set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more Even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins Pierce my heart straight through I got issues in my head like you in my bed, but you keep me on red. Oh, everything is like a test. I better not text or I'll come off desperate. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, baby, you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my head. Play dead when you regret everything that you did that you said. I don't think you understand what you're doing. And my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing. Sitting there, gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion. Even though I offer all of the solutions. I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid. When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid. I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid. I wish when I first saw you, I knew this. When I'm with you, I feel so useless. I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded. Silhouettes of you are like a guitar. Never really know just what you want. With you, I don't ever feel calm. I can feel the sweat inside my palm. Play with me like cats and a string. You don't understand the pain it brings. You don't ever want to give me wings. You don't ever want to set me free. And it's time. We're in game. We've got Life at the After Party on the Order side. We've got Divinity on the Chaos side. I'm Anthony. I've got Nova with me. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm excited to see how this game is going to play out. Lots of great picks coming out from both sides. I'm loving this. The Mori on the ADC, the Neja support. This is going to be pretty exciting, I think. Yeah, that's a dangerous duo lane. Divinity's got to be aware of it. They, you, One misplay, and there is going to be trouble coming their way as our buffs get started and we're underway. I am, I'm super excited. We see the Lancelot went solo. We've got an Osiris jungle. A lot going on in this game. Absolutely. I, I also do want to point out I'm obsessed with this Mori Neja duo over here just because I love to do this in my casual games with my friends. You both alt as a Neja and it's just crazy insane. Sorry for the spoilers, but I'm imagining that's what's <laughs> going to happen here. So we see a lot of pressure coming in here on the duo side. How? Uh, what are we thinking is going to happen? Oh, Ooh, as we see the Ymir get brought down to half health. He's already at a quarter and he's walking a bit slow. He's a big man, but he's back under the safe big tower. And yeah, a lot of pressure out from Duo. You, you called it minus the ultimates. This is a kill lane. This is a dangerous lane. And I personally would love to see a double notch. Oh, as the Sash comes out on the Charybdis, but the Ymir freeze was, was perfect timing. But Ymir might have left himself open. Not quite. He'll get back underneath this tower. A lot of action in the dual lane to start out here. Already within just the first minute, as we, as we see Rob coming at Tiamat here. Tiamat's able to get away. That lower Oof. side of the jungle there is always tricky as a mid laner. Absolutely. As we do see the blink from the Osiris onto the Changa, but it might have been a little early as not much damage is going to come from it. And Osiris got the back up to the safety of Tiamat. You know, sometimes you gotta blink just to get some pressure, as we now see it's kind of working out in their favor, but Osiris is getting a pretty yeah, it's low getting here. getting kind of dangerous. Osiris might want to rethink the strategy here. Changa ability won't miss, but there's the blink from the Robin with the basic attack. It's enough for first blood going away to Divinity, but Tiamat's trying to follow up, but not quite enough. 
just try to stay alive and get under your tower. And first blood goes away Divinity, but unlike we expected, it wasn't from the duo lane. It was from mid. What do you think about that? You know, I think, unfortunately, just that, that bling from Osiris was just too, too soon. Rob waited it out as he should have, and it ended up working out in their favor. Sometimes it's better to kind of play around it. I think it was very unfortunate, too, that the minions were aggroed right on to Osiris, and he was just taking too much damage. I think it could have went the other way had that not happened, but it did. I agree, and I also think that if Cyrus had not blinked in at the beginning of that engagement in the mid lane, he might have had that for the escape. So, a lot of things to consider there. It could be just early game jitters and trying to make a play happen, and that can unfortunately kind of put you out of position sometimes. Absolutely. As you always want that first blood, so you got to be careful with it. But we do see Lancelot here looking very, very low. Guan Yu is applying that pressure, kind of freezing the wave in a, in a sense. Lancelot's going to have to decide whether or not he's going to back and come back in, or if he's just going to kind of wait so he can get his wave. Certainly Lancelot is living dangerously right now, but looks like the Guan Yu is not ready to exactly tower dive at, <laughs> at level 4. As we see... Nayshok going with the sash, but Charybdis is all teeth, and now Morgan stuck behind the wall, but the shell might have come out at the perfect time. Great positioning by the Morgan, and now Nayshok's aggressing onto Ymir and Charybdis. And Osiris is peeking in from the jungle, but he's got company behind him. Sash on the Charybdis, shell from the Ymir blocks the damage. And now this might be even overstep by the life of the after party, but it won't be. One kill goes away of life of the after party, but they're going to follow up as Sully picks up the kill. Two for Divinity, and... With that, Osiris and Morgan are going to back up, and interesting fight there. Great rotations all around, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. I When you said someone behind him, because I was more so peeking in on the Neja and the Mori, you know, it's... So as a mid laner, it's always tricky to decide when you should rotate, but when you do rotate and you do it correctly, it's amazing. As we do see here, Lancelot <laughs> just trying to farm and Guan Yu's just not letting it happen. Yeah, not a very friendly solo lane over there. Kind of, I'm su kind of surprised Lancelot is hanging out this low because that TP is up. Maybe trying to be stick around and make sure he doesn't lose his blue buff. As we do see Guan Yu go for the invade, he's got Osiris to back him up, and Lancelot's kind of low. The blink from Osiris, but he didn't have quite enough spacing for it. And now Guan Yu's going to go on the Robin as the blue buff invade is underway, and they will take it away. So now Lancelot got to stay low and didn't get to keep his blue buff after all. So not, things aren't going great over there in the solo lane. No, not at all. Nothing is worse than having invades on your buff and you don't end up getting it. It really makes that little bit of time not great. Nejah goes up into the ultimate. Brings down Charybdis, but there wasn't as much damage as they might have been expecting. Ymir and Charybdis are about a quarter health. Morgan turns into the Robin. Ymir's going to get picked up by Nejah. And now Charybdis barely with a leg to stand on. Robin Blink in the back picks up the Morgan as the kill finally lands on Charybdis. But at what cost? Robin ults on Nejah. One basic attack might do it. There's the heal. He's under tower. There's the basic double kill for Lush Blood. And the tower picks him up. <laughs> what a turn of events there for Divinity. That was an am like an amazing play there. Very unfortunate for both sides, but it ended up working out. A trade is a trade. I I really enjoyed that fight. That was a good rotation from Rav there. Yeah, I th I think that fight could have gone slightly better for After Party, but they would have had to pick up those kills faster. And Charybdis and Ymir just played it well enough to stay alive long enough. That's I think what ultimately happened. Sometimes it's tricky in that duo lane. You do what you gotta do. We are seeing quite a bit of aggression coming out of Tiamat here on the Ymir in mid lane. I, I'm not too sure what that aggression is going to do in that very moment, but I can see now that those side XP camps are probably most important. We are seeing a lot happening over here, high right side of the jungle. What yeah, and Lancelot can't look to do too much there. He's kind of... He's finding right. himself falling further and further behind. But I did want to ask you, Nova, so we're getting into the, the early portions of this game and some builds are starting to come online. We do see a lot of people over in Solo going to keep our eye on it. Are you seeing much interesting with the builds or is it kind of going predictable padding? And hold uh, that thought oh. as we do see a bit of a fight start to break out. A lot of dancing in Solo, but 
Is there any partners? I don't think so quite yet. But somebody's got to break off and start doing some camps. Dancing over here isn't going to accomplish much. So we'll go ahead and get back to that question. What do you think about the build so far? <laughs> no, and there's the blink oh. from Osiris. The ultimate falls. Lancelot under tower. Guan Yu's chasing him down on the horse. And it's going to be enough for the kill. Midman picks up the kill on FPS. And here comes... Looking for some vengeance, Divinity, but they might get there just in time. Guan uses half. They didn't see the gank coming. Now he's going to get away from Robin. And there's the Chang'e ultimate. It's going to follow him up. Lush Blood picks up the kill onto Guan Yu, and Osiris is going to try to back under his tower. Dangerous spot, but he'll be able to get away from that. And I think we finally have time to talk about the last two fights we've seen and the build path so far. Yes, absolutely. That was kind of a, you know, turntables there, if I will say. It's unfortunate for them. Got to have those wards out. But to answer your question, I am seeing kind of the, the classic Osiris mannequin into Golden Blade. As we do see... Charybdis picks up the kill on the Morgan. It costs the beads, but I'll take it for a kill. Neja was there, but it didn't quite seem to make a difference. Absolutely. I wonder if I'll ever be able to answer your question. <laughs> I know they must <laughs> they must have heard us and just don't want to leave any time there. Absolutely. But I do see that the Mori is going kind of a non-traditional Mori build in my opinion. We've got Book of Thoth coming out here with Sands of Time and I would only imagine it's a Polly coming out next. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do enjoy the classic Charybdis build of Death Toll into Transcendence. That's very powerful. And then, as always, the Lancelot with the Soul Eater. And I can't be too, too upset over the Tainted Steel there. Yeah, the, the Tainted Steel is a good choice to start off against Guan Yu, but the Neja making a good choice to ult away. But Ymir was waiting. Lush Blood picks up the kill on Neja. Absolutely nutty. I will say some great plays coming out of Divinity. They might be a little late to the party, but they end up showing up every time getting those kills. The Chang'a all is extremely important here in any fight. So Soli's going to have to be extremely careful with the timing on things here. Yeah, and Lancelot is going to have to get out of there quick to avoid the Guan Yu, who's had his number the whole game. Charybdis is going to ult onto the Morgan, and it's going to connect. Morgan's going to turn into Robin just to get away, and with perfect timing at that. What a play by the Morgan to get away. Great game knowledge to turn into Robin and have that ultimate to be able to make up that distance to escape the Charybdis. Yes, I, I will say it it definitely is a little bit difficult for the Mori. Mori is going to have to play extremely safe just with the fact of... I'm so sorry, I can't remember Charybdis' ability name, but it does so much damage. I believe it's her one ability, but it kind of helps her... Yes, Spike Shot. Thank you so much. It, it really... It's a projectile, right? So it's definitely shooting out. It does the damage, especially once you get some attack speed on her. It's shredding through people, especially a mage. And I did see an executioner picked up for Charybdis. Uh, but to, to ask you the same question, how are you feeling about these builds so far? I do like that the Emir went mill renewal into, uh, looks like they're working on Manticore, but I like going that mill renewal early. Those, the, the benefit of that healing that comes from those early team fights is really something underrated. You kind of can feel it as a support, especially if you're trying to just keep up with the farm and not fall too behind your team. But there might have been a 3v2 or a 3v4 even fight where you've got a back and there's waves you're missing, there's buffs you're missing, you want to go get your support camp. So I, I love going male first. I think that is a bit of a better play than going even Thebes. I just like it a lot. As we do see the Charybdis trying to invade the purple buff and gonna get it, but potentially what cost? Here's the ult of the Morgan! But the invis around the corner will be enough to get the Morgan away. We do see a pause here. I do just want to point out something extremely important in that fight real quick. We did see the Charybdis go into alt. Any, anybody that plays Mori should know that anytime you are not around minions to that aggro to you, you should definitely try to go invis and just hop right out of that. That's what saved her there, and that was an excellent play coming out of Zamori. Yeah, I think you definitely just said it best. That was 
great play all around it does look like they're going to run into each other again in the dual lane but no kill will come from it quite yet we did see a bit of pressure in the solo lane but that might just be trying to help lancelot finally get a wave or two freely yeah i'm i'm enjoying this aggressive play coming out of the guan yu but as far as i'm aware big Lancelot double only freeze scales. from the ymir but not quite enough to pick up the kill because there was nobody there to follow up on it we do see rav kind of hanging out but he's gonna go hang out in middle lane here which isn't a wrong call we are seeing some some interesting warding happening i'm i'm not sure if that was on purpose or if that was <laughs> just an accidental i've done that before it happens but we do see people just going back to their farming as they should that's really gonna help obviously but when you're already behind you definitely want to make sure you get the xp the xp is kind of going towards divinity here but the gold difference is still on life of the after party we're yeah, seeing even though there's a bit of a kill difference, this game really isn't too much right. going the other way. Robin's going to get in the back onto Tiamat, and quickly Tiamat's going to fall to Lushblood, who's now on a nice little killing spree. Naja might be stuck. Level 9, level 13, a lot of damage, but they're going to turn their attention to something maybe more important, and that's going to be the Pyromancer. Naja trying to sneak back over with Osiris, but got caught out by the Robin, and the Pyromancer will go to way of life of the after party. Did they get a steal on that? I, I don't think they did, as we see Midman coming in here, getting a kill on Lush Blood. Lancelot getting away very, very low, as they're going to pressure in here on this blue invade. Yeah, interesting fight there at the Pyromancer. Robin did a really great job at keeping that Neja away, and but it might not be great for Lancelot in the soul lane. So Cyrus picks him up. Guan Yu's going to get the final hit, but yeah, uh... Wild fight there. I, I I think Life of the After Party did steal that Pyromancer. I don't really know how they did it. I didn't quite see the ability that went over the wall. You know, I didn't either because we were so focused on the Naja just getting poked out as we see Divinity picking up this Gold Fury. Uh, this is going to help aid them quite a bit as we see Tiamat trying to get some poke out. But Tiamat's by herself. Not much is going to happen out of this. That's totally okay. I would like to see some some more wards on the map here. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what's catching Life of the Art after party out. Tiamat doing some damage in the 1v2. I don't think they expected the shell's going to pop up just to get the dragon to pack away. That was a little bit close for comfort for Divinity over there in the middle lane. Yeah, that was really aggressive. I wasn't expecting that out of Tiamat, so kudos to you. Yeah, and now that I... Uh, I, I I'm... I think <laughs> that Osiris threw his his uh, second ability over the wall to steal that Pyromancer. So pretty pretty incredible by uh by Madman there. Yes, absolutely. I am enjoying this Poly pickup on the Mori now. We should see some more poke coming out of her, as we've seen in the in the fight in the high right jungle. We do see just the casual farm game they're picking up scorpion on divinity side everybody's hovering over here on the left side of the map what do you think their their call should be here we do see a gold fury down the oh rob's Ooh. wrapping around we see robin go around the side onto tiamat but we're gonna get the jump away just in time i would like to see we, we kind of we saw a great pyromancer play and that was unfortunately for divinity interrupted by a fantastic steal from midman but with gold fury down with pyromancer down and fire giant the only thing up i think i just want to see some aggression and we might just see that from divinity charybdis waiting around for the ultimate but morgan's gonna get away as the robin for now until sully picks up the kill purple buff belongs to divinity as well as the life of saturn that was I, I'm I'm noticing that Divinity has really great rotations. I'm not I'm interested to know what the the callouts and the communication is here because we did watch, you know, Life of the After Party get pinched right there. They yes. they seen it, they seen them coming, but they I, I I'm curious to know what that communication was because they seen it coming and yet they yeah. ended up getting pinched there which is really unfortunate because they can they can put out the damage and speaking of damage ymir quickly down on how think guan yu's gonna pick up the kill born to meme is gonna fall and 
you know, to your point also with that fight, I I like the rotations, but I love the rotational pressure that Divinity has put on the Morgan in the ADC role. They haven't really allowed the Morgan ADC to be the thing that beats them. If it's going to be something that beats them, it's not going to be that, and they're not going to let it happen. We do see a, the same thing we've seen most of this game. While there's been fights and while things have sort of felt at times to go the way for Divinity, be it the Gold Fury and then almost the Pyromancer until Madman was able to steal it, it's a pretty even game here at 16 minutes. Things can kind of go either way. Yes, we do see there's still a gold uh, in... Uh, I'm so sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, gold in favor of the life of the after party still. Not much has changed in that stance. Divinity is still getting that little bit of XP difference, which is still amazing to see with how they're rotating. Charybdis. Osiris is hanging out over in the duo lane. Charybdis is going to have to ult to get away. Tried to hit it with a bare backstep, but it did not quite work. He still took the damage, but I appreciate the effort. Nonetheless, Changa is going to hit the ultimate onto Morgan. He's going to turn into the Robin. The great shell by Ymir might be enough to save. Morgan's going to have to head out of here. But the real Robin says, don't take my mojo and slams down another kill for Lush Blood. Yeah, I think definitely overextended there, just a smidge trying to get that kill on Changa, which gave Divinity enough time to rotate over to that. And Midman's gonna pick up the kill onto Jay Swervy over in the duo lane. Got caught out there in the duo lane. Not quite as safe as, as he was thinking. No, not at all. We do see Lancelot come in to poke out, but Guan Yu's hanging around. It is looking in the favor of Divinity. They do seem to kind of know what's going on. Ymir's got those walls on lock. Pyromancer yeah, the, the is walls up. Are really effective, you're right. Yeah. So, so we're at 18 minutes here. It's 10-9. Gold still even. We're very even pacing here. If you're leading Divinity right now, What's your game call? What do you, what's your game plan? How are you changing things? What do you want to see going forward? Well, Divinity is already doing a great job. Hold that thought. It's a blink from Robin and Soli and Robin are going to blow up Tiamat over at the damage camp. And now Guan Yu finds himself without much help. But here they come. Osiris is going to jump in onto the Chonga. Guan Yu is going to go off to the side to the Robin. Chonga will not be able to escape as Lone Wolf picks up the kill. Ymir is going to drop down to ultimate at the back as Naja gets into a bit of a scrum with Lancelot. Naja is now stuck. The freeze. Very low health. The wall blocks him in. Jace where it picks up the kill onto Lone Wolf. They turn their attention over to Guan Yu, who's trying to dash away. Osiris trying to heal up from the Harpies. And now Lancelot chases the horse down with one of his own. And they're going to turn their attention back towards the Pyromancer. Will Midman be able to repeat it, or is it going too fast? Looks like it goes too fast. Divinity picks up the Pyromancer. Another great fight for Divinity. Absolutely. I was actually going to say, as Divinity, they've got these rotations on lock. It looks like they've got some good ward coverage on whatever objective that they're planning for. I was going to call, grab your Scorpion, grab Pyromancer. Continue getting that farm up is extremely important. And I think they, they played it out as they should have. Life of the After Party definitely tried to show up there, but unfortunately they fell to Divinity there and Divinity played it quite well. Yeah, and I do think Life of the After Party is doing well because these fights are starting to kind of be one-sided. But again, they're not falling that behind, but the Morgan might be caught out. Gonna go invis the Ymir freeze just misses if only he knew. But Morgan's got a long way to go. Turns into the Robin once again with a nice immunity to get away. Once again, a close call for the Morgan. But over in the middle lane, Midman gets the kill on Sully. And Tiamat gets to walk away with a sliver of life. Now he's chasing down Lush Blood. Double kill for Midman over in the mid lane. You know, once Midman has someone in his sights, it's very hard to get him off of that person. He is ready. He is going for it. And he definitely did that there to save that Tiamat. Yeah, and I think it was huge being able to take that Robin out for a bit. The, it's basically so far been a story of the jungles and the rotation so far, as we do see a Primal Fury getting pulled by life of the after party. Charybdis is the only one over here to spot it out. Is he going to be able to take the steal? He's going to pop into ultimate. 
And they're gonna let go of the Primal Fury smartly. And Osiris is gonna be able to get Charybdis off. It's gonna cost the Aegis and the Purification Beads. After Party gets the Primal Fury, but Midman gets picked up by Ymir. Over in the back, Lancelot fighting the entire team, hoping the Ymir can make that magic happen twice. He's arriving just in time to save. Big wall blocks off four of them. He might be able to save his Lancelot. They're gonna run away with their tails between their legs. Play after play by Born to Meme manages to save two of his teammates. Such a massive play coming out of Born to Meme there. You gotta time those Ymir walls perfectly. And he just showed exactly why Ymir is such a good pick. Yeah, that was the, the I could see that Born to Me and positioned himself almost waiting, hoping they would go through that particular path in the jungle. So the 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 brain power there was just immaculate, an absolute five head on Born to Me over on Divinity. I was I was just about to say five head there. That was that was perfect because at first I was like he's kind of hovering a little too long there. But Morgan turns into Robin and Lancelot's gonna get away as <laughs> Morgan lands down on the minions. You know the Morgan so far has consistently been turning into Robin. I think I don't know if we've seen the Morgan turn into something else. I might like to see. The Morgan mix it up here and try to turn into somebody else. Tiamat did get a little bit low and got poked out of mid, but Midman's doing some damage. He's gonna ult down on the Sully and pick up the kill. Starts to chase and turns his attention to the Ymir. I don't know if there's gonna be a wall to help him this time. We're gonna find out. He drops down into ultimate, doesn't do much damage. The kill goes to lay a long wolf, and they're gonna turn their attention over to the right side of the map. Yes, I would like that. I would like to see them do exactly what they're doing. Go for this. 20-ish minute fire giant just to give them some more pressure here. We do see Lancelot sniffing it out though. He's ready. He's yeah, hovering. Yeah, he's taking it around. It's about a quarter health. Robin's not far behind him. Here's the play for it. Life of the after party gets secure, but at what cost? Midnight gets picked up by FPS. Morgan gonna have to use Aegis to try to survive. Here's the shell. And all of a sudden the health bars are starting to lean the way of after party. Over in the back, Tiamat picks up the kill with the Lush Flood. That's a huge death for Divinity. Morgan down to a quarter. Charybdis, Lancelot, Tiamat, Didacted. Everybody's fighting, but After Party's taking the advantage with a 2-3 to three victory over in the Fire Giant fight. Listen, Anthony, you guys can't see me right now, but my mouth was dropped. There was so much happening in all of that. Tiamat showed up for her team as she should. That was such a close call on that fire giant. Yeah, that was... They're going to make me run out of water faster than I anticipated, <laughs> I got to say. Yeah, this is this is actually an amazing game so far. I was expecting this level of excitement for sure, but we can definitely see these great players just ready to play the game and win. They're picking up Pyro, going back to their farming. We've, yeah. We're looking at a couple more impressive. towers left. They're they're doing exactly what they need to be doing. And I, you know, for a while I was a little bit concerned by not concerned, but I was interested by the Charybdis build. We did see the Odysseus bow get picked up a bit early on for my tastes, but overall it's it's been working out. I do want to see a bit more damage coming out from Charybdis because I think Divinity is going to be relying on a lot of consistent damage because the, the burst so far has been effective, but neither team has had a strong advantage and they kind of need something to give or somebody to, to show up and shove. Yes, I... Personally, I don't build Odysseus Bow on Charybdis, but I don't hate it either. It can definitely, once it's procced, it's great. But we still got the kin size. We've got this. Uh, I'm sorry. Is it silver? It's silver branch. Silver branch. Um, correct. Yeah. I was gonna say silver bow. No, there's so many names. Don't even feel bad <laughs> Honestly, about it. Honestly, silver branch. Yeah. I just shortened the name. It's fine. But you know, having that silver branch is definitely gonna be great on that. I can kind of agree with the Odysseus Odysseus bow, but still great either way. She's definitely 
poking out, which is exactly what we need this Charybdis to do. She's... We do see a powerful five-man group over in the duo lane by Life of the After Party. And just like you said, they're really taking advantage of this fire giant. I didn't want that to go unnoticed. But Divinity shows up to defend the tier two. And another great Ymir wall might have trapped the Neja. Are they going to be able to follow up on the damage? Not quite yet, but there it is. Chase Work gets the kill onto Lone Wolf. And now it's all going to break loose over in the duo lane. But it looks like Life of the After Party is just trying to retreat. And Guan Yu gets stuck behind another amazing wall by Born to Wall. But he's going to have to use his ultimate to get away. Robin with the blink to fall off the chase will be enough to pick up the kill. Finally, FPS gets the kill onto Didacted. And Divinity has turned things around. All that for a tier 2 tower. You know, in, in instances like that, especially when the enemy team has Fire Giant, typically you're not defending a tower, right? You're gonna soft defend, you're gonna back it up, and they did a risky call there, but it worked out. Yeah, that definitely went their way, and they're gonna get a tier two of their own as a reward for their troubles. And looks like they're considering aggress aggressing onto this Phoenix with the advantage here, but some quick damage on Charybdis might have changed the plans as they're gonna fall back to their own jungle, but Osiris is gonna ult in on top, seeing who he can mop up. Midman gets the kill on the Jace Warp, but FPS falls back and deletes Midman, and Morgan turns into somebody who isn't Robin, and it might be effective enough, it is! Sully gets picked up by Saturn, Tiamon kills Lush Blood. Real Lancelot's low, he's got to get out of here. Neja brings Ymir out of the sky with barely any health left. Ultimate doesn't matter. Double kill for Seahost. Amazing gameplay right there. They were trying to retreat and life of the after party. It ended up working out in their favor. They were ready for it. I got to say the fights in this game, the synergy so far for both teams really have been fantastic. I, the, right there though, the, the, the courage really, and I don't say that lightly, by Midman leaping in wouldn't, and knowing if he had to make his plays to get the kills there, it worked as it made a great setup for Life of the After Party to take advantage. And then that looks like a frenzy is popped to take on the Lancelot and the Phoenix, and it's gonna prove valuable as Life of the After Party picks up the Deicide. Here comes Charybdis though to defend the Phoenix. Just a little bit of health left. He's gonna think better of it and walk back. Life of the After Party lost at Tier 2, got chased back to their own Tier 2, defended their Phoenix, ran it down mid, and stole a Phoenix of their own. Massive, massive choices here. And it, I, there's so much happening. It's hard to keep up with all of it. We've got Life of the After Party falling short, but coming right back up. Same for Divinity. I, I'm not too sure which way this is going to go anymore. Yeah, for a, for a while, it looked like Divinity was really starting to pick up the, the pace. But after that Phoenix defense and that initiation by Midman, things turned around again for Life of the After Party. So now we're kind of back to even Stevens again. We have a, There is a mildly significant goal difference. But as you get later in the game and builds are finishing up, that really starts to only matter for the sake of upgrading your actives and getting some power potions. So not as much to mention now. Yeah. And we're going to have to now dance around this fire giant, which is close to enhanced. And that's going to, whoever gets, whoever picks that up is going to win for sure. As long as they play it right. I, I have seen it go the other way. As and they... speaking of getting played right, Nonshot's going to take Charybdis into the air and delete him after he lost half health very quickly. And now we've got a 4v5. So they turn their attention to the fire giant. Divinity's trying to set up their game plan in the back, but they better hurry up. It's the fire giant's already halfway down. Lancelot coming around the back. He's taking the scenic route. But Ymir blinks in the front way, but not in time. Life of the after party gets the fire giant and turns their attention. Seos picks up Sully. Robin's low. He's trying to escape, but Midman's on the case. Will that Magi's be enough? I don't think so. Midman gets the kill on Lushblood, and all of a sudden Divinity went from trying to steal a fire giant to trying to protect their home base. Ymir is caught off in the solo lane. All four members collapsing. He gets the lead a quick. Seos gets the final kill on Born to Meme. And now it belongs to FPS and the Lancelot to try to defend. Osiris doesn't care. He blinks past the Phoenix. They want the Titan. Life of the after party. After getting pushed to their own Phoenix, turned it around, caught fight after fight, and now they're gonna take the victory 
in game one, unless something magical happens, but I don't think so. There it goes. Life of the after party picks up the W. What a game one. Whew, that was a fantastic end of the game there. I didn't even get a second to breathe. I might have to send a bill for some Aquafina to Life of the After Party, so if production can help me set that up, that'd be fantastic. But what a game one we saw there. Pretty amazing performances all around it. Everybody pulled their weight. Impressive damage from the Tiamat. What do you see there, Nova? Give me your wrap up here. You know, I, I was actually going to point that out because Tiamat had to play pretty safe there in the beginning to middle of the game. But once Tiamat got those abilities leveled up, got the items online, Tiamat was diving with Midman. They were ready to go. That Osiris, Tiamat, that damage is extreme. As we see the difference between both teams, I definitely think... You know, Osiris and Tiamat here really helped just do the little bit of poke. As we did see Midman hopping in, going, you know, all in on that one team fight as they were chasing them all the way back up to their Phoenix line. You know, sometimes that's all you need. One sacrifice and then everybody else is able to follow up. Absolutely. I don't think I could have said it any better myself. And with that, go get your drinks. Go take your piddle breaks. We'll be back here soon with game number two on the Smite Draft League. Taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy. If I got something to say, you better let me speak. Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything. I pop off with the new rock. Electronic, blow the sonic roof up. I'm too honest when I take a few shots. They're too toxic, need to take a new song. You cannot save me. Cause I don't need saving. It's everything I've been chasing. All here for the taking Don't wanna test your luck with me I think I've had enough disease I'm sick of all the bad thoughts People who are half-nuts
Let's talk film. Welcome back. I hope you had a nice potty break. I'm still Anthony. She's still Nova. And after an exciting game one, we're getting into the picks and bands of game number two. Yes, that was such an amazing first game to watch. I'm excited to see what these picks and bands are going to be. If I were them, I would definitely try to get rid of that Ymir. That Ymir showed up. Yeah, those walls were <laughs> you, you know, it's funny. We said it in the picks and bands that as simple as it might be, those walls can sometimes be a difference maker fight after fight. And we saw it. Born to Meme was born to play Ymir and just went off wall after wall. It was it was impressive. Absolutely. As we do now see a, a Guan Yu ban coming out right off the gate, still with a Cupid. But what's our thoughts on the Guan Yu ban here? I think with the Guan Yu ban, they felt like Didacted was very powerful on that Guan Yu in the solo lane. We, I mean, we, we talked about it early on. The, the pressure on the Lancelot in solo, it, there he couldn't even farm at some points. We saw him stuck under his tower with his wave frozen like he was on a 3 a.m. ranked grind. It was, it was tough to see, but with that Guan Yu gone, maybe he'll be freed up to actually move around a bit in that solo lane. Yes, absolutely correct. Unfortunately, there's no worse feeling than being stuck under your tower in the solo lane, not able to grab your farm because you want to try to rotate before they do. We do see the classic Horus ban out again. RIP to our man, Midman. Very unfortunate there. I'd like to see possibly an Osiris ban too, but then we're kind of targeting bans as we have still other extremely you know strong players i we're seeing a hades ban and now still a daji i'm wondering i'm wondering what the game plan is here coming in i like what two. you said about banning out the horus and you know sticking with what you know and taking it away because as the season goes on especially in, in the premier league we're gonna see teams struggle to find the balance between getting rid of comfort picks versus getting rid of the strongest characters in the game because in settings like this in competitive settings that's tough to take away but speaking of being taken away in the first game kepri was banned out in this game kepri's the first pick what do you think about that i i think a kepri pick shouldn't be a first pick here because i feel as though kepri is very easy to work around Absolutely. and pick against but they might have they they've got to have a game plan here right i'd be excited to see after party pick up some counters to the Kepri because they're all on the board and there's some strong counters. We do see the Emoja getting locked in though. We did see that band out last game. So pretty excited to see it get picked up this game. But you know, so far there's a rhythm. Both supports picked so far were banned out last game. And now we get to see them in game two. And I'm excited to see the waves pop up as we do see a Kamazot get locked in as well. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see this Emoja gameplay. Kamazots is also pretty strong. Very annoying to fight against. Uh, we do see the the, the cuckoo. Um, <laughs> but I did want to point out, too, that there's a Nezha ban. Anybody else seeing this? 
Yeah, I I did notice the Neja ban, and there was a bit of a self-report. It looks to me that if they weren't going to play it, they didn't want to play against it. And I, I could agree with that. You know, Neja can, especially those sashes. Ooh, we do see a Ho Yi getting locked in. Another character that was banned out last time. And I love getting to see a Ho Yi go crazy. And now we get double the suns with the Morgan locked in. On the other side, we see a Sasano getting picked up. So, so far, a completely different look with the exception of the Morgan to game number two. I am enjoying both of these drafts so far. I am enjoying them. That the... The Mori into a Hoi into a Kefri, that's already super strong right there. We do see a Susano. In my in my experience, Susano is more of a mid to late game god, especially in the jungle. But Yeah, for sure. You know, depending on how you farm and how you rotate, it's gonna work out in the end. Uh we do see a Rav ban. Yeah, taking him away from Lush Blood. There it may not have gone the way last time for Divinity, but Lush Blood was impactful on that Robin, and that cannot be denied. And a Lancelot ban here. Yeah, so it looks like we get to just experience a whole new bit of a party here in game number two. I, you know, that that excites me, especially because like, we get to see a different game plan because, you know, the game at the end there did take a huge swap in momentum, but for the majority of the game, be it team fights, one on ones, or whatever it might have been, both teams were fairly evenly matched. We see the Tiamat get banned out, and now we see an Uller getting hovered. Oh, I hope that gets locked in. I love me some good Uller. There's nothing that I despise more in in the duo lane than an Uller. I've got to disagree, but that's just because <laughs> Uller's a good god. <laughs> and it is gonna get locked in, so. We get to hear some axes getting thrown, and if you haven't heard that sound effect on repeat in your brain, you are not playing enough Smite. It's true. I hear it. I hear it in my dreams. <laughs> I remember when I was first playing Smite, I had the uh, the let's switch it up stuck in my head. That was oh. not a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can agree with that. And as you said, there's the cuckoo being brought back. They did not forget, and I, you know, it's interesting that they hovered it. What they pivoted to the Ho Yi and are still able to pick it up here tells me that that was in their plan from the beginning. Definitely trying to communicate those picks and what their composition should be as we see a Hun Bats being hovered currently with the Cuckoo. Ooh, I, you know, normally this would not be my favorite kind of team comp, but after watching the, the plays last time and watching the synergy from divinity i actually think i like this team comp because it could easily be very effective if they play their cards right absolutely time's running a little ticking pretty quickly here we're gonna see the hoon bats and the kukulin locked in while we see a yorm hmm. Ooh, a yorman gander full of surprises here as we're gonna get into game number two we can't wait to see how this shapes out. Make sure you meet us back here. It won't be too long. We'll be right back in the Smite Draft League. Slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I 
never answer me, no man, I still go, go, go. Kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you can get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget. I use them all to push me to my best. So treat the worst of times just like a test. If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they want to rise up while you drown They want to fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless Make 
make some progress I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I'd like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you hate that I've been doing fine I'm not wasting any more time Last game, walls were the only thing standing in the way of life of the after party and victory. What will be in game number two? I'm Anthony. Nova's still here with me. Let's kick off game two. Are you excited, Nova? I am. They really showed us what they could bring to the table that last game. I'm interested to see how this one's going to pan out. We do see a bit of role swapping. We see some characters going interesting places. There is a Jormungandr mid what are you seeing so far? What do you expect to see in this game? Give me your Nova predictions. The Nova predictions. You know, I can say I've never seen a Yorm mid, so this is going to be really interesting to watch and see what goes on. The camera on the solo lane is not something new. Camera in solo lane really slaps hard. You just got to give them a little bit of time. You know, these are some great picks. I'm interested... Again, just to see how it plays out. I'm wondering if there's going to be the same amount of pressure coming out of Life of the After Party here in the for duo sure. lane. Something I'm looking for personally, and maybe some things to keep an eye on, I want to see impact from FPS in the laning phase against Didacted and not get pressured out like we saw last time with Lancelot not being allowed to even, you know, peek in his own area. We do see dual lane pressure go the way of Divinity this time, which is good, but... With a Ho Yi and an Uller against each other in the duo lane, it's classic and it's brutal. We're going to see a lot of fighting this time. Oh, absolutely. Both of those are crazy gods. We do see Susano and wrapping around here. Here comes Susano. He's going to get the kill first blood for after party. Picking it up where they left off. Gets the first blood in solo lane. You know, that was looking a little frightful. There's that classic minute and a half-ish, you know, rotation over there to the solo lane. Yorm's getting pretty poked here while Susano's coming up. Susano's gonna get the pressure away and say, no matter how tall you might be, I've got your back, Yorm. And back in the solo lane, once again, FPS has to fight with one hand tied behind his back from the start of the game. Not exactly how you draw it up in scrims, but if last game was anything to tell the focus now needs to shift to farming and keeping up and trying to get that lead back because unlike last time you have a character that can compete with the camazots as we see the good root from born to meme on the kepri but it might have been a little bit too much to handle but not actually as the uller backs away and ho yi still has every bar of health so not going to be too much fighting over in the duel lane just quite yet the ricochets used straight so no trick shots today from Swervy, and just action after action as we see the axe stun on the Kepri now. You know, this Kepri, born to meme, showed us last game that he has game knowledge and he's fearless. So I don't think even with one HP, he'd be afraid to stand in lane next to his ADC. You know, having an excellent support really shows up as we, we do see, see this strong ricochet again, and once again, we're boxing in the duo lane. But this time, Ho Yi gets pressured out, and just like we said, War to me was trying to stand in front of him, but Ho Yi made some weird positioning choices and somehow managed to do the tango incorrectly. But the jump will be enough to get him away. And now everybody in the duo lane's got to hold their breath because one wrong maneuver could be life or death. I'm enjoying the, the aggression here. They're really, you know, trying to show each other up here. I seen that they wanted to go for that purple invade, which can be pretty critical. Hoi is wanting to go in on this Uller, but yeah, he, like you he said, he wants to put that pressure move. on. Yep. yep. And they are gonna take the chance. Oh, and they were caught out. Uller's gonna use the beats to get away, but the Hoonbots all secures a double kill for Lush Blood. More of the same early game. Lush Blood is someone to be afraid of. Two kills for Divinity. Over in the solo lane, we do have an ultimate out from Cuckoo, but that's just to make some space. And once again, action on action on action between these two teams. It's 
actually insane how well they're able to quickly, you know, rotate to each other. We see a Yorm ult coming out here. Morgan's gonna turn into the Hoombots to try to get away. Sasano did miss with the teleport though, and that's gonna be enough for Morgan to get away. Unfortunate misplay there for Midman. You know, sometimes playing the Morgan, you gotta just ult to get out. It could have gone differently. I'm, you know, glad for everyone involved. They were able <laughs> to get out, but I need some more action as we see Susano hovering, ready to go in. And he is gonna secure that red buff away. And there's just no breathing in this game. If you're not playing Arena, you're not playing the Premier League. Morgan's here, Sasano's getting away. Who bats hot in the chase? One basic, and before Jormagander can do anything, Lush Blood gets his third kill onto Midman. Yes, I, I can definitely tell that Lush Blood is ready to get in there, get in your face, poke you out, just as they did the the first game here. But we could see, you know, after that last game, just how aggressive they can get. Jump for just jump in the duo lane, the axe goes wide, and just like that, we went from potentially Mayweather versus whatever the other guy's name was that left my brain as I was about to say it, to <laughs> two kids on a playground playing in the sandbox. No, oh, every time Pacquiao, I'm thank you. <laughs> every time I'm like on this, I've got this thought coming. Something happens, and people it's are fighting. It's the worst feeling, absolutely. I'm enjoying this though. So far, there's. I'm there's the this ricochet, duo son. The axe goes wide, and the fighting continues. These two should get a room, but over in the solo lane, it's looking much of the same as even with the rage meter filling up, not a lot could be done. And now Kepri and Emoja decided they wanted to tickle each other over in the duo lane. And Hoagie and Ulu are probably mad about it. They want to get back to their 1v1. And just so far, the fighting is non-stop as we see Kepri get the big root on Yamoja. It looks like their tickle fest went too long. Yamoja's trying to get away, but everyone's going to follow. Here's the waves to try to get away, and that's going to secure the escape for Yamoja, but the purple buff will go the way of Divinity. Over in the solo lane, FPS, leave the man alone, gets picked up by Didacted with Sasano's rotation coming through clutch. I'm definitely curious on what the communication is right now. We see a lot of attention over here on the duo side, but off screen, we, we've got stuff going on in solo lane. Mid lane seems to be kind of kosher here, but there's a lot of pressure on two totally separate sides of the map. What's your thought process on this? I mean, we said it in the beginning. We wanted to see more impact and more... I, at first, I wanted to see aggression from FPS, but now what I'm looking for FPS to do is just try to keep up and stay in this game. Maybe try to out-rotate. Uller's gonna jump on Hoagie, but Hoagie's dancing around his own minion, so the Axe can't find a space. The Suns will give him some spacing, but you can't space out an Axe. He's down to one HP, but the three! Oh, the arrow misses! The jump is good! He might have lost his purple buff, but at least he's got his life. Sometimes it's better to just back up, move on, come back, get your farm what you can at the very least. As we see Hunbats going for a very critical Scorpion, which is extremely important. Can't stress it enough for those of you who don't find it that important. We see Kamazots poking out, kind of just waiting it out, to be honest here. Yeah, and Hoi is going to try to to get the look of Yamoja out of the duo lane and try to ward up. He would like to be left alone because this is a this is a duel match between Uller and Oyi in the duo. Leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Put your efforts elsewhere, honestly. Yep, I can agree with that. I, I want to turn our attention while we should have a quick moment here on the builds. What are we what are we feeling, Anthony? I overall, I think I like what I'm seeing build wise we we do see the kepri going the gauntlet of thebes i said last game i am big on the male renewal and we do see the gank and solo Hoombots is there fps finally gets a kill onto didacted and gets to feel what that's like to have a one next to his name and scoreboards you know that's massive for fps there extremely massive to get that kill Sasano showing up just as the 1v1 is going on. Raining Suns, and now Ho Yi's got none left. But he's gonna jump the pull from Sasano, but he jumps right back down, trying to get the kill on Uller. 
Not the greatest decision as Midman picks up the kill on the J Swerve. Jormungandr, though, in a 1v2 with the Morgan and Kepri bouncing them around. And they're just going to look the other way and walk back to their jungle. Extremely amazing rotations coming out of both sides, really. You know, a lot of people are probably going to look at that jump from the Ho Yi and think he could have used it to get away. And while he think he could have used it to get away, knowing what we know now with that rotation, trying to get that kill on Uller is a respectable attempt at the kill because ultimately that was the best that could have come from that situation with that gank from Sasano. I can agree with that, absolutely. Sometimes, depending on the situation, it's gonna go the way you don't want it to. We do see an early Doom Orb from Morgan here. What do you think about that? Uh, I I love an early Doom Orb because you get that movement speed. You're able to, it's the 4%. You're able to quickly get around. It's got a massive amount of magical power. As we see, Kepri going for their scorpion and managed to get it. Good for Kepri. <laughs> <laughs> once Good again, Kepri. Born to Meme is trying to make it onto the highlights after this game. And once again, the duel breaks out in duo lane. These two are just laying the smack down on each other. And it, as great as it's been to watch that so far, what we're seeing is because of the fighting going on in the duo lane, it, it seems like the other team or each team is trying to work around each other to take advantage of that pressure. As we see now, Uller gets ganked. It's revenge. Lushblood gets the kill on Saturn. They don't forget. You know, I I can definitely see the thought process here, right? Uller is extremely strong. And if you let Uller get online, good luck. That's all I can say, right? So when they're kind of saying, all right, guys, let's make some room. Let's get Hoi Yi going. Let's get this pressure in that duo lane. As much as we love to see the 1v1, sometimes you got to shut them down early. Yes, absolutely. And speaking of ganks, we're not done yet. But Kamazots had the ultimate in his back pocket to get away. So a bit of an overstep by Divinity, but they did get the Kamazots ultimate, which leaves them room for some tussling oh over goodness. by the fire giant. But Morgan turns into Hoombots, but it doesn't matter if you get deleted. Now the real Hoombots is trying to take on the Sasano, but Jormungandr's still slamming around. Kepri ultimate giving some movement speed to Hoombots to get away. Big wave comes out. It looks like Cuckoo might be stuck. Sasano's putting his focuses on the Kepri. Cuckoo gets picked up by Seahost. Kepri gets away and a big fight going the way of life at the after party. We're seeing a lot of what happened game one, where we see Divinity able to apply that pressure early game, get in there, show their face. But then Life of the After Party really shows up. They rotate, they communicate, they grab that 12 minute Pyromancer, trying to get another Scorpion. Massive plays here. Born to Meme almost got another Scorpion steal there. You know, the presence there has been impressive the entire time. And I was just about to say before that fight that I was starting to look, I want to see some teams start to break off for the objectives because while the fighting's great and it gives you that advantage, you know, the objectives are ultimately going to be what wins you the game. As we saw last game with that final fire giant victory, turning the tides, really. Uller's going to follow up jump for jump, but the ax is no good. Ho Yi juking into the wall, using the minions. Oh. Arrow's going to do some damage, but not quite enough. And here comes Hoombots peeking out Uller. He heard you use those abilities. Big Blink with the ultimate's no good. But now Uller's looking to turn the tides. He doesn't know who's around the corner, but they don't know Yamoja's there too. Raining suns down onto the Uller. They're both gonna jump on him. Lushblood picks up another kill. He's on a rampage on Saturn. Sasano's trying to use the tornado. Hoi's gonna pre-beats it. He's gonna get damaged, but Kepri might be there to save it. Tries to throw out one ricochet. He's gonna have to walk back. He's a bit low, but Hoombots is still here to fight. He gets the kill onto Lone Wolf. Another kill for Lushblood. Midman's gonna finally shut him down, but doesn't matter because Jace Worm came all the way back and he got the kill anyway. I, I am trying to piece together what just happened. So much was just going on there and it's going in favor of Divinity here where we see Hui Yi really just hanging out. As, as yeah. nervous as that could be, I would have backed. That is so frightful, but it ended up working out in their favor. Ooh, and Kekulon barely gets his blue buff, but he was able to get it. 
FPS finally securing some kind of victory for himself over in the solo lane. And we do see a bit of a gold diff starting to go the way of life of the after party. Nothing major yet, but it's something to keep an eye on last game because last game we saw it was even the majority of the time. And then all of a sudden it was a 10K split. I, you know, I just, I'm enjoying the choices that they're making here right so we see a lot happening in the duo side and the solo lane we see kamazat he's got that level on kakulin kakulin's trying to box the best he can but kamazat is just starting to shred and here comes hoonbots but kamazat manages the ult the jump from hoonbots and he's going to use that to get away hoonbots is going to take the chase into the jungle but he's going to run into a sasano and think better of it we see a lot of heavy presence from Laugh of the Life of the After Party. And Ho Yi a, jumps oh. onto the Euler with the beautiful ricochet followed up by the Suns! And he is gonna take a minute to bask in those Suns! And that's finally a solo kill in the duo lane. So this is what I started to say earlier, right? We if if you're gonna try to pick a side of the map to get somebody ahead. I'm gonna bank on my duo lane and get my carry ahead as much as possible. And we see that here. And here comes the Gold Fury fight. The Hoombat's ult gonna be negated by the Jormungandr. The Kepri was not able to to make any difference there. Lush Blood picks up the kill onto Midman. There's the Kepri ult onto the Hoombats to get him away. And now Kepri finds himself stuck in between a mountain and a wave. He's trying to get away, but he's got the Yamoja wall in front of him. He's still tiptoeing away. The root was no good. The dash is good, though, and he's going to get himself away. We're looking at Midman down for the count. I'm interested to kind of see going forward, you know, the communication choices that they're going to make here to try and get some follow up for Midman here. We, we see time and time again how both sides can really back each other up. I would like to see a little bit more of you know, wards for Divinity here. I'm not seeing too, too many on the map here, if at all. I'm seeing quite a few Life of the After Party uh, wards. Yeah, and they've got a lot in pocket too, and not so much for Divinity. Something right. I'd like to see from Divinity, in particular, Lush Blood's performance so far has been great. He's 7-1-2 and two on that Hoombots, but I think the ultimates need to be tightened up just a little bit and make it a little more controlled because that's a huge difference maker of an ultimate and you don't want to go burning that at the beginning of a fight and miss it on two targets and now you're without it for the rest of the, the team fight you know as all of us smite gamers know sometimes the way you think a fight is going to happen ends up not going that way and that's totally cool but like you said sometimes it's better to hold on to it and keep it in your back pocket to see if maybe you can use it as a peel you know yeah absolutely we do see a bit of a bit of a ruckus in mid lane. They both think better of it and go back to farming, but you can never tell with these two teams because they take any chance to break down in the parking lot and have a gang war. Yes, and we're going to see, I was going to say before, every again, every time I go to point something out, some, you know, a fight happens. We've got Gold Fury, right? I would like to look at the stats here again for XP difference and gold difference. I think, you know, we've got pyro up, we've got gold up. We need to start kind of looking at positioning for this. We see Uller kind of hovering over there. Kamazots is still in his his lane. We see a lot of pressure just in general from Yorm. We see it time and time again in these fights. He's ready, Seahost amazing gameplay here we do see again the life of the after party ready for this pyromancer i'm interested to see if it, it's going to get stolen here yeah kepri's trying to set himself up for the steal and divinity will secure the pyromancer born to meme it just wants to be on the highlight reels he wants to be front and center as Kaku gets in a bit of a fight with Yamoja, but he's gonna try to get to the solo lane. He'll be able to get away, but not so much for Hoombots until the Kepri has things to say about it. Lushbot picks up the midman. He's got the movement speed to go back to base. And now with the Morgan turning into Hoombots, utilizing that ultimate very effectively, we're gonna see not a kill on Kamazots. He might get away for now. Hot in the chase though, is that Koku? He's not done. And that. Cooler Axe secures the escape for Kamazots.
The great escape for Didacted. What do you think could go differently in these fights here? I think the Ho Yi could use Raining Suns to protect himself from Jormungandr and go back to his side of the map. But I think we saw it that time. It might not have been Lushblood who used it, but we saw an incredibly impactful Thumbot's ult coming out of Sully. It's interesting to see kind of the difference between the communications here. Um, I'm going to say it time and time again. We've got Hoonbats knowing when to get in and when to get out as Divinity is positioning around this Gold Fury, ready to poke at it. But we've got Uller and Yamoja ready to set up a steal here. We do. The Gold Fury is down to about, about half. Uller and Yamoja are hanging out. But Divinity's got it locked down. Uller, not quite in time. Gold Fury goes away to Divinity at 19 minutes and 53 seconds. And now they're turning their eyes to some kills. Let's play Arena at the red buff. Hoobots gets poked out almost instantly and has to fall back. Sasano's on the hunt. Tornado's no good. Now Morgan picks up quite a bit of damage onto Sasano, who falls to half and has to go the other way. Another, just one of these fights where they're able to, to do so much, but everybody's able to escape. I'm not sure if it's communication. I'm not sure if it's just let's back up. Let's go our separate ways. But it's been impressive to see every single time. It blows my mind. I, yeah, we, we just this whole, both in game one and game two so far, it's been a lot of apply pressure and get off of it, right? We still need to farm. We see Kefri sitting at level 13. We've got Yamoja sitting at level 14. You know, typical levels for your supports, but we still need to get that farm up, get our items online. We need to start dancing around fire. You know, we got to get the wards. We see a lot of minions, you know, kind of meeting still in the middle of each lane. So we still got to pick off these towers. These objectives are massive in the favor of either team that picks it up for these great calls that they could do. It's just a matter of how are they going to execute it going forward. Absolutely. And, you know, we have seen a bit of a quieting down of the the impact from that Uller. And we do see that Ho Yi is pulling a bit away in terms of farm itemization and that could be incredibly meaningful as we get into the later stages of the game here. Yeah, we're looking at Hoi Yi picking up an Executioner, a Kin Size, an Odysseus Bow. They're making the call to go for this Fire Giant. There no we one's... go. Kamazots might have stepped it out with those bat nostrils, but Yamoja gets caught up in the back with Hoombots. And now Kamazots doesn't have anywhere to go. He's going to get into the sky, though, as Jormungandr goes into the ground. And everybody's surviving for now until Didactic is picked up by Sully. Ho oh, Yi's got the Kefri ultimate on the back. Keep an eye on that. They might want it further on. Sasano's going to try to teleport in to get to the Ho Yi. But Kakolin says, get away from my mans, as now the wave goes up in the back to cause some separation. But it wasn't incredibly impactful if only to make some separation from the fire giant looks like divinity is going to choose the back here and life of the after party manages to turn what could have been a disastrous fight into something rather successful yep we're gonna see divinity coming back quick as they can for this fire giant that's looking in the favor of life of the after party fire giant I'm down to half so far but they're gonna wisely back off of it born to memes gonna get the root but he's falling quickly he's following a soul laner but now he gets to follow the blink from Hoombots, who's gonna instantly go onto the Jormungandr. the frenzy comes out to counteract it kefri's gonna be able to get away but now uller gets picked off by sully on the morrigan and they're gonna be able to chase life of the after party back they're gonna turn their attention right back to the fire giant and here you know. we go, life of the after party's falling enough. I'm sorry to cut you off, Nova, but they just won't stop fighting the raining suns. Life of the after party is gonna pick up the fire giant with Sasano flanking in. He's gonna take the beads. Lush Blood picks up the kill into Midman. Jormungandr's trying to cause some disruption, but he's just getting back to his team. Unbelievable steal right there. 
That was incredible by Midman. He lost his life, but he saved that fire giant. Ricochet is no good under the Kamazots. They're chasing this all the way back to the Phoenix if they have to. They want blood. Boombots ults the Kamazots, but he ults out of it. He's going to pick up the kill with the Lush Blood. He didn't care about any monkey noises. Now the waves go up, and they're going to trap the Kefri and Tassano inside. Kakolin's going to fall the Sea Host. Ricochet, no good once again, not gonna pick up any kills. Kepri ult used and Sasano in the back for movement speed to get away. Kepri, quarter health, finally retreating. Oh, he's not done though. He's gonna dash in, he gets the jump away. Kamazot's falling, the purification beats. Kepri saying, please, let's leave. Doesn't matter, Born to Meme gets killed. Swervy follows him, double kill for Saturn, picking it up. He's not out yet. What a fight here at 24 minutes in this game. I cannot believe what we just watched. It is actually crazy how much of a difference it can make try, you know, stealing an objective. We see the goal difference. We see the XP difference. It's going to life of the after party. That little action changed the course of the game for this team. Now they're going to look at getting Oni Fury, another massive objective to help aid them in winning the game. We see a trebuchet pushing down left lane, pushing those minions up. You gotta make the right calls here. Yeah, absolutely. And not even a contest for that Oni Fury. And right now, momentum is fully in the swing of life at the after party. And it's up to them what to do with it. They're gonna go for that tier one and left. And it looks like they want more than that. And Pyromancer goes the way of Divinity. That's their response to the Tier 2 tower, but they're going to try to back and regroup for the defense of potentially something more, but Life of the After Party doesn't really have an interest. They're going to back, they're going to item up, and be prepared for the next war. You know, sometimes you got to make those tough calls on whether or not, you know, especially if you're going for two towers in one lane, you know, do we grab T1 and T2 and try to push for that Phoenix? Or do we get the two towers? Do we back while we still have Fire Giant? Group up. If there's another objective, do we go for that? Do we just get the XP, get our items, and come back full force? And, you know, you've been harping on it this whole time with the communications and the game plans and somebody calling the shots and how much of a difference that makes. And I think we've seen it in these last couple of fights from Life of the After Party. Jormungandr's gonna jump up on the Ho Yi. Ho Yi's instantly down to half health. He has to jump to his team for safety. Jormungandr's got the beads to get away from the Hoombots and the Kakolin. Blinken from Kamazot, he's on the Morgan. He's deep in there now. He's gonna get to the ultimate up. Morgan trying to get away. Kamazot has to think better of it before he gets too separated from his team. Great call there to call that Kamazot's back and focus on the tier two. And now we're ready for buffs and we're ready for a base siege. I want to point out, Seahost has got kind of the best Yorm alts I think I've ever seen. Holding that alt can either, you know, you're using it to peel off and get out of there, or you're using it as both. You're peeling off, but you're also getting into the fight to help get your team in there. Yeah, I think we've seen time and time again this game, that Gander ultimate, it disrupts the entire flow of things for Divinity, and they haven't really been able to work around it. Yeah, it definitely causes a lot of chaos there, which clearly is needed. Um, I, I'd like to see how the wardage is over at the Spire Giant. That's going to be coming up not too, too soon, but it's still going to come up. It's getting close to enhanced. I'd like to see them try to wait it out to see who's going to get the EFG. I think that's going to play massively in how this game goes towards whoever's going to win. I what agree. Are... We saw that last game, too, because that right. EFG ended up being the game deciding fight. Yeah, see, we're looking at deep wards. Uh, you know, on top of communication, I always, always harp on warding. It's extremely important to everybody have at least a ward every time you back. Get them in the in the back jungle. And we're going to see Capri possibly getting caught out. He's already down to half. Hoombat's ultimate tries to save him, tries to create separation for Hoombats to get out of there. And it works for now, but Kepri's still low and Uller's still hammering it on. And now they don't have a Hoombats and they don't have a Kepri for this EFG. Yeah, it's looking like Fire Giant's in 
the favor of life of the after party. We've got Hoi ready, but he's and on backing wards. off of the fire giant is life of the after party as they're looking for blood instead. Midman picks up Sully. Could this be the beginning of the end? Blink from Uller onto Ho Yi in the back. Purification beats. Basics trying to land. It's going to be no good. Aegis into the Kepri. Midman gets a double kill. He picks up FPS in the back. Ho Yi's going to escape thanks to the Kepri ultimate. But now we got a 3v5 going the way of life at the after party. And this is their game to lose at the moment. You know, they're definitely getting in there. They've got their wards. They know exactly where Divinity is at any given time. They... They picked off who they should have, and now they should start looking at this fire giant, but it appears that they're not. Yeah, it looks like they want more blood instead, and Ho Yi might be the first victim. He is a Saturn gets the kill on a Swervy. And now a hoop assault's gonna hit hard, but it doesn't matter. Seahost picks up lush blood, and they're dying left and right for Divinity. Kepri picks up the speed buff to try to make a difference all on his own. But life of the after party turns their attention to bigger and better things at the fire giant. I think it's important to note that if an, if anyone was watching any of that fight, you could see that life of the after party now picking up fire giants. They purposely started to pick off one by one, which only secured their fire giant, which is, I believe it was enhanced. It was, I believe, and this makes a gigantic difference because Divinity, they're just coming back. They, we've seen the last few fights all going the way of Life of the After Party. What we didn't see last game, when they got the Fire Giant to end the game, they were able to run it down because they had won a fight. This time, Fire Giant was not contested. So while Divinity is on the back foot right now trying to defend, it's important to note that for defending this time, they're all up. They're all healthy. So while their chances may look bleak, they are significantly better than we saw in game one of the set. Agreed. We did see just now a pretty big XP and gold difference here. Uh, Life of the After Party picking up Gold Fury. They're just grabbing objectives. We still have Pyromancer on the board. It's ready for taking, but it appears that Life of the After Party is choosing to go for the most important bird on the map. We've got some wards. We've got a little bit of splitting up here. I'd like to see Hoi Yi grouped up, but there's a lot of pressure here. Yeah, I don't know if, if I'm huge on the route Hoi Yi is taking back to his teammates. Kamazots could have sniffed them out, but not quite. But they are split up a bit as the Phoenix Siege is going to begin. Buckle up. This could be the end here soon. Jormungandr's peeking around, no commitments yet. Are they going to attack the left lane Phoenix or the middle Phoenix here? What are you thinking? You know, they're doing a split, which is amazing to see, right? You as a team, as Divinity, have got to decide who on your team is going to defend which bird. And I think it worked out because now Hoonbats is out of the fight. There goes the middle Phoenix. and. Here comes the defense. The Raining Suns might have been dropped a little bit early as they were really only there to disrupt the Jormungandr. And he was busy tunnel digging anyway, so he didn't even care. Kamazots, though, very low in the back. Lushbot picks up the kill and didacted. And now Hoombots and Sasano are throwing hands. Kepri's going to get picked up by Lone Wolf. And there's the Frenzy Pop. Sasano's on Ho Yi. Ho Yi has the Aegis. Morgan's going to try to turn on Sasano. Sasano has beads for it. FPS picked up by Saturn in the back. Double kill for Midman. Sully's gonna get the kill. Rampage for Seos. The side for life of the after party. And that's gonna be game. The set goes the way of life at the after party. Midman, Lone Wolf, Seos, Didacted, and Saturn came to party today. Amazing gameplay all around. Good game to both teams. Life of the after party. Congratulations on your win. What a fantastic end. Once again, we saw Life of the After Party being able to commit to the end of the game. They saw their opportunity to end, and instead of having the chat scream at them, end Omega LOL, they ran it down and actually were able to end, which is such a valuable skill set to have on your communications. We are going to take a look at the stats here. Tell me what you see, Nova. Wrap us up. Right away, I'm looking at Seahost. 
Man, look at that damage. 5, 0, and 8. 40,000 damage. He was able to get in, get out, and get right back in with his ult. He was showing up every single time for his team, and everybody was able to follow up with that lone wolf on the Yamoja, ready to rumble. I think massive gameplays out of both sides. Born to Meme, again, just ready to get his alt out, start saving people, which we've seen a lot of in the beginning of the game. Lush Blood really tried their hardest on the Hoonbats. We've seen a lot of amazing gameplay from both sides. Such an amazing game. Absolutely. I think it goes to show the talent of our Premier League here in the Smite Draft League. But with that, we are going to wrap it up on Sunday's games here of week one of the Smite Draft League. If you like what you saw, make sure you follow Smite Draft League. You join the Discord. You keep up with everything. We've got games and more games coming at you. I've been Anthony. I've had Nova with me. We've had Nooblet on production. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Smite Draft League. Taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy. If I got something to say, you better let me speak. Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything. I pop, pop with the new rock, electronic, blow the sonic roof up. I'm